Thank you for joining me in the History of Science Collections of the University of Oklahoma Libraries. Let's see what stories await us from the vault to throw light on the fascinating account of European and Chinese collaborations in science during the age of Galileo. This book recounts the establishment of the Jesuit mission in China in the late 1500s, led by Matteo Ricci. Under Ricci, in order to identify with the Chinese, the Jesuits committed themselves to avoid commercial entanglements with European traders. Under Ricci's leadership, the Jesuits adopted Chinese names and dress, traveled extensively, and immersed themselves in Chinese language, philosophy, art, and literature. Ricci was the first Western scholar to master Chinese and needed no interpreter to, to accompany him. At the same time, the Jesuits brought to China Western mathematics, cartography, astronomy, and scientific instruments. When Ricci predicted a solar eclipse in 1592 with greater accuracy than the astronomers of the Chinese court, the emperor invited Ricci to Beijing. Ricci arrived in 1601 and resided there until his death in 1610, translating Euclid and other works into Chinese. Johann Schreck was a friend of Galileo's who assisted him during his telescopic observations. Schreck was inducted into the Academy of the Lynx, an early scientific society, only eight days after Galileo. Yet a few years later, he joined the Jesuits and went to China, where he wrote this work on engineering in Chinese. How many people are aware that Galileo had a friend in China? This book was later published in Japan, so it throws light not only on scientific exchange between Europe and China, but also on the circulation of scientific ideas throughout all of Asia. Back in Rome, Kircher collected all the information he could gather from Jesuits in China, publishing this massive encyclopedia on China, Tibet, India, Korea, and Japan in 1667. As a matter of course, all Jesuits received basic training in mathematics, including the mathematical disciplines of geography and astronomy. However, during the four-year journey from Italy to China, Schreck tutored his fellow Jesuits to advanced levels in astronomy. His most proficient student was Johann Adam Schall von Bell, shown here in his official dress as a Mandarin of the first rank. Other portraits include Jesuits and various Chinese dignitaries and collaborators. Here we see Matteo Ricci and a Chinese astronomer and diplomat, Zhu Jiankui. Kircher's work includes two notable early maps, one of Asia and one the earliest map of China printed in Europe. One of these copies is a Latin first edition and a French second edition published three years later. Kircher also documented Chinese and Sanskrit characters. Like many others, Kircher tried to assimilate ancient Chinese events into a universal history. This book is Shaw von Bell's account of the Jesuit work in China after Ricci. Shaw established a new Chinese calendar and provided a new basis for predicting eclipses. In 1645, the first Qing emperor appointed Shaw as director of the Bureau of Astronomy, head over all astronomers in China. Working closely with Chinese collaborators, Shaw oversaw the publication of more than 30 works in Chinese. These Chinese scientific works drew upon the writings of Galileo, Copernicus, Tycho Brahe, Kepler, and John Napier. Titles include the first description of the telescope, written in Chinese, which Shaw presented to the emperor along with a working replica of Galileo's telescope. Another work was a history of astronomy notable for the first mention of the name of Galileo in Chinese. The collaboration between Shaw, the Jesuit astronomers, and their many Chinese collaborators 
signals the birth and early modern high point of international relations between Europe and modern China, with repercussions in Japan and throughout Asia. Science is a story. What stories do you want to hear and tell about the Jesuits and their Chinese collaborators?